Hey, this is Joe from The Recording Revolution. Today we're going to talk about good versus evil. Good guitar recordings versus bad guitar recordings. And how to avoid the latter. Today we'll fall squarely into the engineering category. Getting a better sounding acoustic guitar. However, the other big piece of the puzzle is, well, I have a good sounding guitar recording, but what parts do I record? That I can answer with my checklist that I just came out with. This is the ultimate recording checklist. You can have it for free. Just go to recordingrevolution.com slash checklist to get access to the checklist plus a video that explains how it works. All right, let's dive in. I've prepared some examples for you. The green tracks are the good recordings. The brown tracks are the bad recordings. Uh, and I'm going to play them first so you can kind of guess as to what the badness is. And then we'll talk about it. I've got a few of these examples for you today. Let's listen to the first one. That one should be pretty obvious. The second guitar is out of tune. Now, to be fair, a guitar is never perfectly in tune. Like, you will always have to, at some point, say, that's good enough. Like, even that first, there's a little bit on the B string that's a little out on certain chords. Some of that is just going to be a part of the process. But obviously, out of tune guitar, never Never, never a good idea. Now, I know that seems so obvious, I almost didn't say it. But here's the thing. I will hear productions from people who send them in to me, and I'll listen. And one of the things that I hear fairly commonly is, I don't even know if commonly is a word, but I will hear out-of-tune guitar recordings a lot more than I would expect to. And my guess is folks are so focused on all the other pieces of the recording and production process that they forget to just make sure their guitar is in tune. And they record these full takes, and then what ends up happening is not only does the guitar being out of tune obviously not sound good, but it does this weird thing in our brains where, to me, it makes it sound makes the whole mix sound off. Like It's like I'm noticing things I didn't notice before because that guitar is out of tune, and no amount of, obviously no amount of EQ or compression or anything else is going to make that better. So the advice I would give you is spend as much time as you need getting the guitar in tune, preferably before every take. And if it means five minutes of really just noodling with it, that's fine. Even if there are people in the room waiting for you, take the time to do it because it it, once it's recorded, it's there forever, right? So let's get it right the first time. This is like the ultimate version of getting it right at the source. Another big tip, if you use a capo, I don't have one handy, but you know what I'm talking about, to play something higher up in the register, a lot of people, for some reason, they'll take the capo off, tune the guitar, and then put the capo on and start playing. And then they'll wonder, oh, why is it out of tune? It's because the capo doesn't do a perfect job right? Capos tend to make it go a little bit sharp. So instead of doing that weird dance, put the capo where it needs to go and then tune those strings, get them sounding perfect, and then record. Doesn't make any sense to do it the other way. All right, here's our second example. These get progressively more subtle, although I still think they're probably pretty obvious. See if you can guess what the problem is with the brown recording here. <coughs> Okay, so that one is obviously, obviously, if the first example we played was out of tune, this one is out of time. This is just something you have to learn to be able to hear. Like, towards the beginning, it, it's honestly, at this point, it's really hard for me to play that out of time. Um, so the first part was just a little bit ahead of the beat, and then it got progressively more ridiculous as it went along. Um, learn to hear that, because what happens is, when it's out of time, somehow the mix ends up sounding muddy. Because now, instead of the kick hitting with the guitar 
on that downbeat, that boom, it's now, since the guitar is hitting before it, it creates this weird sense of muddiness. And we might think, okay, we're gonna EQ that until it sounds good, but there's no EQ'd version of that that's gonna sound good. The guitar needs to be in time. Now, there are two ways to approach that. One would be to use editing, time stretching algorithms, beat detective type stuff to fix the recording. And occasionally that's appropriate and works. Bigger picture, the real solution is to get better at this. Practice with a metronome or a drum loop of some sort and get good at playing the downbeats on the downbeats. Uh, An easy way to Easy way to do that is to play a simpler part until you get good at keeping in time with the rhythm. Then you can add in slightly more uh, complicated rhythms and things like that. But this is well, well worth your time to invest regular time in practicing this. Um, It'll make your recordings and productions sound better. And if you ever play with other musicians, they're going to like you a lot more because you're not speeding the whole gang up. Okay, here's the final example. The answer is it's too muddy. Here's really the really interesting thing about this. The reason it's too muddy, as you probably know, is that I got too close to the microphone with the guitar. This thing called proximity effect means the closer I get to a directional mic, the more bass response that microphone tends to have, meaning it's even boomier than it is in real life because we got so close. The thing is, and the thing that'll bite you in the butt, is that when you're listening on headphones and you get really close to the mic, a lot of time on headphones, that sounds pretty good. It has this nice, thick, like, yeah, my guitar sounds rugged and manly, right? It's got this big beefiness to it. Problem is, in actuality, when we listen on our speakers or any system that has any amount of low end, we hear this, this incredibly deep, boomy, obnoxious, muddy low end. It's like a kick drum going out of control. That is completely unnecessary. Now you might say, well, Joe, can't we just EQ that out? You, you can, we can get rid of the muddiness, but what ends up happening is we take out all the good stuff with the bad because it's all layered on top of itself. We can't really just take out the bad frequencies without losing the good warmth of the guitar. Like this first guitar, it probably still needs a little EQ in the low end like most guitars do but it's a lot more balanced sounding. A little bit of EQ and that's gonna sound lovely in the mix. This one, by the time I EQ out all that low end, it's gonna end up sounding thin and harsh, or worse, I don't EQ it out and it just ends up being this big boomy thing. And in a full mix, actually, let's do this. Let's put the the beat back on. Listen to how it's gonna make the kick drum sound worse because the guitar has so much low end in it. You might get to the mix and say, hmm, this mix is sounding muddy. What are you going to do? You're probably going to go mess with the kick drum for a half an hour, trying to like EQ it or do some crazy processing to the kick drum to try to get rid of the muddiness when the source of the muddiness was this guitar. Rather than giving, putting yourself in that terrible situation, just back away from the microphone. Anywhere from like 8 to 12 inches is great. If you get super far away, obviously that'll sound bad too. But you don't have to be really close to the microphone to get a wonderful sounding acoustic guitar. I'll finish with a story, a cautionary tale. Years ago, I was recording an album of my own music. I had a day job, so it was a Saturday. I had set aside to record all the acoustic guitars for this album. And I recorded all day and recorded like 10 songs of guitars came back a few weeks later to listen, and they were all way too muddy. It was a major bummer. What happened? I was too close to the mic, of course. I was using headphones. It sounded okay in the headphones, so I just went with it. Now, whenever I'm recording guitars, I always, always, and I encourage you to do this too, record something, put the headphones down, and then listen on my speakers just to double check and make sure. And if I discover something nasty there, I'll fix it before I spend the next eight hours recording guitar parts. 
Thanks so much for watching this video. Hope it was helpful for you. If you don't have a copy of this recording checklist, I highly, highly recommend it. It's new. It's one page. You can print it out and make it a part of your workflow. Go to recordingrevolution.com slash checklist to get your copy. All right. See ya.